this can be a really very selfish, self-centered profession if you let it be. Lead by example. When when there's a natural disaster, Hollywood gets up and they have fundraisers and telethons and this and that, and they raise money. But, you know, where's the support for the military? In my mind, let's do that. Let's rally. Look, I mean, it's one person trying to create a little bit of change, mm -hmm. but it starts with one person. <laughs> You're listening to the Christoph Lewis Podcast, a podcast where I have conversations with inspirational people. My name is Chris, but my family calls me Christoph. My goal is to have as many conversations as possible with people who have forged their own path by pursuing their dreams, making them a reality, all the while emitting positivity and sharing this knowledge with others. I seek these people out and share this information with you, proving to the world that you can do what makes you happy and do what you want for a living while being a good human being. We'll talk about careers, but we'll also cover any story that inspires. Let's do this while helping each other. Thanks for listening. I'm happy you're here. What's up, my friends? Welcome to the Christoph Lewis Podcast, Create Your Career. This is conversation number 113, and I'm absolutely excited for you to be here for yet another amazing episode because today my guest blew me out of the water. I first saw him in Saving Private Ryan and then in 13 hours, Captain Phillips and his new movie, Sergeant Will Gardner. We get into talking about all of these things, how he got into the industry, why he got into the industry, and why his most recent movie is so special and how it's giving back to the community. A very, very interesting conversation. We talked about sparking the conversation in ourselves with helping other people and how we need to be able to ask for help as well, even though it can be really hard to do. Remember, you can find this episode and all the other conversations and the contemplations on ChristophLewis.com forward slash podcast or on any of your favorite podcast apps. And you can find me on Instagram at Christoph Lewis. So without further ado, I cannot wait to get into this episode. Welcome to the Christoph Lewis podcast, Create Your Career. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. Like I was saying, uh, in my eyes, you're a legend. You've been in, in uh, too many movies and, and shows and all these things to even count. And it's just, uh, it's always surreal when I have these conversations. Um, honestly, regardless of who I talk to, because when people give me their time and they want to talk about these kind of topics and help other people and share their story, I'm, I'm always just honored for that. But you have been in some really cool movies. I did want to throw that in there that I've, I've really liked. And I'm um, just absolutely honored to have you here. For those of us that don't know maybe some of what you've done, do you mind giving us an introduction and speaking about more towards who you are and what you're doing? Yeah, so I, I you know, I sort of, uh, I'm from, I was born in New York and, uh, and my mother's from Texas. My dad moved to New York. And so uh, out in New York, uh, I moved around a bit as a kid. Uh, my parents got separated. This is how I got into the business. This is leading into my resume. Sure, sure. Uh, but uh, my mother was in law enforcement, and when my parents separated, she went back to Texas. My dad, who was in the arts, stayed in New York. And, uh, and my mother remarried, and she married uh, uh, my stepfather, who's, who is an actor, director, okay. writer, producer. So as a kid, he would throw me into little roles and you know he'd be filming and say hey run over and say this and do this so i got a kind of, i got kind of a taste of hollywood i went back to new york i, I studied something completely different got my degree in uh in fine arts and then to pay off my degree uh i landed uh, uh an audition for a hot, big hollywood movie and i got it and i never turned back so Love that. my first big film was for robert zemeckis called contact uh, and then my second, probably more recognizable, was Saving Private Ryan. So yeah, I did that. This is many moons ago, and uh, and then I just started working, you know, constantly. And and uh, and Private Ryan kind of opened the door from you know this sort of uh, you know streak of military roles and. Yeah. Uh, and so on a military, on the military side, I, I did a movie called The Great Raid about the Cabana Tuan Death March. Uh, I did a movie, a sci-fi movie that had some military elements called Spectral. That was a big one. Uh, 13 Hours, Captain oh, yeah. Yeah. Phillips, 
Uh, yeah. I was on a show uh, about CAG or Delta Force called The Unit, mm -hmm. uh, which ran for about four years. Oh, yeah. Uh, I know there's a ton more that I'm not thinking of. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. uh, so those, those those are the, you know, the big ones. And then outside of that, I've also done some other stuff. But, um, you know, but but large probably for your audience, sure. those are the, the, the ones to, to note, notate. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for sharing that with us. Uh, and yeah, it was Save It Pride Ride, and that's when I, I first knew. But it's interesting to hear that that's what opened up the door to all of that that genre or that niche, I should say, because that was one of the questions that I wanted to do because like we were emailing back and forth. And I wanted to talk about more about your philanthropy through like your current movie, Sergeant Will Gardner and all of that, those things that we were going to get into. But I was really curious on a personal level. I was like, I, I wonder why that that was the case. Um, but even more deeper than that, was there like a, a mindset attached to that movie exactly or that role? Or, I mean, you could have easily continue to not be in that those type of roles but do you know why specifically that you chose to stay in that community that specific niche of military movies military roles i mean look you know it one i was completely floored that i was chosen to be part of that sure. film I yeah mean, I, you know, I, it, when i went in for the audition i thought there's no way i'm ever gonna get this thing but the, uh, <laughs> it's funny how that turns it, out though right it's kind of funny i mean um <laughs> But, you know, I think, look, I think there's a couple, you know, things at play here. Like one, when, you know, Spielberg sort of gives his stamp of approval, you know, sure. in terms of, you know, you playing, a, you know, portraying a certain kind of guy, you know, everybody that everybody jumps on the bandwagon, basically. And, you know, and so uh, I just started getting these offers, you yeah, know, and, yeah. and, uh, but, but, but what I but, you know, the reason that I didn't, you know, detour uh you know, try to avoid, you know, playing soldiers at a certain point was, was because one, I love the community. Sure. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I, I have mad respect for the military and, and, uh, you know, and I'm, and I'm a sh shooter. I love, you know, I'm a gun yeah. owner. I love uh, yeah. going out the tactical side of, uh, of training, uh, is the most fun that you could offer me in the course of a day. I mean, it's, it's really, uh, I love doing it. And so I think that translates on screen men and, and, uh, you know, and then I try to bring something human to these roles yeah. other than, you know, a dude and, and Digi's barking orders, you know sure. what I mean? So, uh, you know, I, I, that is became a bit of a challenge to me. It's like, how do I take, you know, what most guys would probably lay down on screen as, you know, a pretty flat character that just, mm -hmm. you know, gets behind a weapon and gets angry, yeah. you know, and, but, you know, so I try to bring a, an element of uh, a human element to it. And, and, you know, and, and, and look, you know, I'm at a point in my career right now where my, my manager just recently, you know, said to me, look, are you, so are you, are you going to just start playing generals? Like, what are we doing now? You know, like, so I think, uh, you know, I'm going to probably start to do other things and I'll talk about, you know, some of the, the, the shows that I've been involved in as of late, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, anytime I can sort of portray yeah. what you guys do, um, uh, honestly and, and, you know, and, and do honor to, to your service and, you know, and, and, uh, let people audiences that aren't familiar with the military yeah. uh, see, see what happens. Uh, I, I seize that opportunity. Yeah, yeah Max, I, I love that. And I appreciate you sharing that. And honestly, like I was just thinking like, yeah, it's just fun as shit. Like if there's a lesson to take away already, it's just like, it's like, this is your life. Go have fun. And it's so funny. You're like, you didn't think you'd get that part initially. And I'm like, that's probably over 20 years now. And then you like, look back and you're like, holy shit, look at all these other things that have opened up. And it obviously, didn't stop you from trying out for that position, uh, for that role. And then here we are having this conversation all these years later. And I'm just like, I, I would be here for the full half an hour if I just listed off all those parts, roles, like everything that you've been on. And a lot of that, like you said, it opened up the door to that. And like I was saying, just like, it's fun tactically to do that stuff. I think it was 13 hours. I was watching it with my wife and I don't know if it was like after the movie or something I saw on YouTube, but you were just having fun, like running through with the guys. And, uh, it might've actually, I had a, I had Chris Pronto on here the other day 
and I was talking to him and just like his attitude, I was just like, <laughs> all you guys nailed those roles so well. I just wanted to say like, now that I can tell you face to face, it was just so fulfilling to watch like after having met Chris in person and then seeing you all fulfill those roles and like stay so true to their character like you had mentioned earlier and to be able to offer that not just this you know mundane person and then uh it was just a weird connection but yeah you guys were like running and gunning and just I was like that's what it's about like doing stuff and supporting people I, I love it but you also got to enjoy what you do and that's what I well, love about guys, you know those are those guys are, that we you know played in that movie uh are real men like they're yeah. you know Chris is a bad and, and, yes, <laughs> you know, and Mark Geist, and you know, I mean, Tig, and all yeah. these guys. That, you know, they're, they're just they're they real. And and the, the 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 wonderful thing that Michael Bay did is that he cast men to play men. You know, because yeah. the Hollywood uh, habit is to cast these like you know kids that are barely out of puberty to to yeah. come in and you know <laughs> yeah. and play yeah. like men yeah. in the military. So. Uh, so that was a good move on the on Hollywood's part, but you know what I was going to tell you that that also that I that I just sort of love about the the way my career has kind of played out is is uh, you know, and this will this will this will this has you know a lot to do with your show and what you're trying to talk about. But the uh, in Private Ryan, um, what I noticed, you know, and, and because I when I when I got that job, I was like a young dude. I was in my twenties. I was mm-hmm. you know out of New York and. I didn't really have, a, you know, any sort of opinion about the military. Sure. My politics were kind of all over the place. I didn't really, you know, and so I was just sort of finding myself. But what I what I noticed is that the veterans that they invited to that premiere, when they left the theater, uh, they one they were just drenched in tears, wow. and two, uh, they were talking, you know. And, and what that movie did for the World War II veteran community is that it started a conversation about subject matter that they uh, were notorious for sitting on and not, yes. and, you yeah. know, and, and not yeah. keep talking about. So that is part of the healing. And then you realize the power of film and like the yes. power of this media medium and in in what an amazing thing you know the uso is and you know in yeah. terms of bringing yeah. entertain well, okay so these are two different things the uso is bringing entertainment to the troops bringing a little piece of home you know to the to uh the battleground the uh but film you know suddenly i went oh this is this this can elevate what i do you know, yeah. this can make what I do uh, much more important than just delivering entertainment value. Yeah, a you know? sense of purpose. It, it, right, exactly. I mean, there's a healing here, yeah. you know. And so I really sort of what triggered in my mind was this kind of desire to, to, to do be part of projects that started a conversation, started a healing that maybe, you know, we're, we're retelling of history that, that were uh, – you know, we're educational in that yeah. respect, in that regard, uh, you know, and then ultimately what I ended up doing was making this movie, Sergeant Will Gardner, who, yeah. you know, which is, uh, if you want me to just kind of go into yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this, so when we, when I was on the unit, I went to the Middle East a couple of times and, uh, you know, what, what I, what I saw were, what, and, and by the way, like, people don't realize this. If you're not in the military, like how young uh, our troops are. Yeah. The, the, the right? average age. I mean, I'm <laughs> yeah. guessing, but it's got to be like, what, 22? The average age, I think, is it's definitely the low 20. It's got to be 22, 23 for sure. I mean, I was I was the old guy and I was in my late 20s at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're absolutely right. And it's crazy being over there. Where were you specifically? It's crazy. Can you, like Afghanistan or were you in Afghanistan or Iraq or? Uh, both. Okay. Yeah, so I, okay. went, I, I went over twice okay. and, uh, you know, both times, you know, we were, because we were on this like, you know, show about, uh, you know, these tier one operators, we were very quickly uh, kidnapped and whisked away into the, you know, out of the green zone and into Such fun. Like, <laughs> the mountains of Afghanistan, but the, but it, which was amazing because we got to see, uh, you know, these, 
and can't go to these encampments and mm-hmm. you know places that mm-hmm. were getting hit mm-hmm. pretty regularly mm-hmm. and and get to you know uh our, the troops that wouldn't normally yeah uh, get okay. to see anybody so awesome. so that was kind of cool but i so that was my fr- the first thing that hit me and then you know and then i befriended this guy and and you know who was an army ranger and we stayed in contact and you know he came back he had this horrendous experience uh reintegrating i mean he literally went through every single possible ailment and and you know situation that that you know i mean just briefly like he survived two ieds he was the only survivor of one of them uh you know came back with pts ended up with with uh dependencies you know lost his wife fell homeless i mean it was just like one thing after another and at that time uh you know i thought this is going to get really bad uh you know Mm -hmm. because we were just starting to see the tbi numbers increasing dramatically and and, uh and even starting to see uh you know veterans of that of that war falling homeless you know in the u.s and so i wanted to make this movie that would give back uh, to, uh, the troops that would, that would give to foundations that were, you know, supporting, uh, the VA Mm -hmm. where, where the VA was, you know, falling, lagging. Uh, so I, I vetted three incredible, uh, charities and foundations that, that do, that just change lives and, uh, and chose them to give 30% of my movie to, uh, and, uh, of the profits and, um, you know, and then also like create something that wasn't two hours of somebody suffering, but that was like inspirational, that was, you know, inspired, you know, other soldiers to help fellow soldiers that yeah. were suffering or, you know, or yeah. people to get off their asses and get out and help yeah. a soldier instead yeah. of saying you support us all, you know, the troops do something, yeah, and, I love that. you know, you know what I mean? And that yeah, laid yeah. the groundwork. So we did that and it, it, it's one of the, the biggest accomplishments, you know, of my career to date, like it's, I'm getting ready. I'm setting up a, a big screen in at Pendleton for, you know, they have a thousand seat theater, theater there to, to go screen for the troops. And, you know, and I'm just trying, so I do a lot in my spare time, yeah. but basically it's become a big part of my life, the giving back phase. <laughs> and I absolutely love that. Cause we were talking about how I love focusing on that. I, I love, encouraging people going out there and pursuing what they want in life. But I, I think it's very important to also focus on, okay, that's great. And as much as I encourage that, let's help other people because there are other people out there that absolutely need it. And a lot of people don't understand that they even need the help sometimes like your, the friend here that you're mentioning, or even anybody in your life. I can think of people that one of the things I say on this podcast a lot is, is I realized in myself that I was selling myself short a lot throughout my life. And so I want to have these kind of conversations, spark these conversations. Because one of the things you said earlier was just to start the conversation, save it private Ryan. They came out, the, the gentleman, it's, it just, it sparks the conversation and just talking about things, having them out there and you're able to make a movie and then repay in that manner. You're hitting all those billets. You're sparking the conversation throughout your career from the beginning, yeah. like we talked about. And now you're able to do it and you're like, this is your movie <laughs> and you're able to yeah, give, yeah. you're able to give back as well. And it's just, it's, to me, it's incredible, but you also, it's not all these things. It's also, you need to get off your ass. You need to help people too, because just, I, I don't, I want to get too political, but you can't just say a couple words and say, you know, I hope you're in my thoughts or something, but you got to go out there and you got to do it. So it's really cool to highlight somebody like yourself that's going out there and you experience something because the story started, uh, you know, lest ever we forget you were overseas and then you befriended this gentleman, came back, saw what he did. And it doesn't just sit there in your head. Like that's it right? You went out there, created this, and then you're able to actually give back as well because the, the money is what helps change people's lives. As much as people don't, don't want to talk about money, like money yeah. is what puts, yeah. you know, and helps. Well, you know, money. so when my, you know, my experience with my buddy uh, was that in he, he was starting to uh, go through things that were symptomatic of traumatic brain injury mm-hmm. while he was in combat. And, uh, and he was, this is, this is a, 220 pound army ranger like yeah you see this guy like i mean the <laughs> epitome of the you know yeah. the guy that's kicking indoors sure and he's terrified yeah to come forward and ask for help yeah uh you know for fear of being sent to the rear ridiculed 
stigmatized, yeah. you know, and uh, and so even when he got back uh, to the U.S., I was offering, I had hooked him up with these, um, with one foundation that I work with in particular that said, hey, we'll fly him out. We'll put him, like, we'll take care of him. All he has to do is show up at the airport. And I couldn't get him to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. so it was, it took some. Yeah. It took a lot of, uh, (laughs) yeah, it took some persuasion, man. And and it wasn't until, you know, years later, he came to me and said, hey, I, you know, I think I'm ready. Yeah. It takes time, you know, it's like, but it takes time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like you said, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off there, but you're, you're just so right. Like when you said, like, it's all those uh, stereotypes or the stigmas against coming forth and asking for help. And that's why I think uh, another reason why it's so important to talk about these things, because now we're talking about, and I hope to God that somebody's listening to this and being like, that's what I needed to hear. And, And, and I truly believe that or else I wouldn't be, you know, you wouldn't be talking to me. I wouldn't be talking to you. We wouldn't be spending our time having this conversation if we didn't truly believe that somebody could actually listen to this podcast and, and hear your story that you've shared with us today. So being able to spark that conversation and it obviously you hear it's um, <laughs> you're not weak for asking help, but all of those stereotypes, like you have to cut it down to the core. Like what do you really need? And, and none of those other things, those external things, what you think people might think of you, but even his career, I, I understand that because if they identify a quote unquote issue, then they're, then they're not going to send you to the front. And he lives, right, he lives for that shit. He wants to do that. Right. But at the same time in the back and in your head, you're struggling with these things. So it's a very, very, uh, can be a helpless place until people help and step in like this, but you have to accept the help as well. And when you're home, you're dealing with a whole nother world yes. of problems. You yes. know? So, I mean, it's really, it's really important that, uh, you know, that people, understand that soldiers understand that it's not uh a show of weakness Mm -hmm. to ask for Mm -hmm. help you know what i mean is that you're you're like listen i have you know and and only because like you know when i did captain phillips about like i was the only actor i mean i you know they they put all these retired navy seals around me you know and you know and these have become my best buddies and you know and and the guy when i was doing the unit i've got all these other cag buddies that you know like really my my dearest friends but i can tell you that in that community there are so many of these tier one operators that are now coming out and saying god i i gotta deal with this yeah you know and I'm so it's happy for that. Part. I'm so happy yeah, for that. Yeah, it's fantastic, man. It's it's really it's really fantastic. The thing the thing there's a card at the end of my movie, you know, and and for those that that don't realize this, this is very sobering. So I'm just going to say it on your program. Okay. The, you know, there there are over 300,000 cases of diagnosed traumatic brain injury, combat related traumatic brain injuries. Um, in, in 2015, there was an inspector general's report that stated that over 300,000 soldiers had died awaiting pending healthcare claims. Oh, 60,000 plus, although it's impossible to, to, to gauge this accurately, yeah. 60,000 plus veterans on uh, homeless on the streets of America every day. And we're still in and around 20 to 20, uh, 22, uh, you know, taking their own lives daily. So yeah. It's not front page news, but but the but there still is a crisis, you know, and we still need to recruit help and we still need, you know, and thank God for these outside foundations, like I said, because, you know, I have buddies that have had uh, red carpet experiences with the VA. And then, you know, I also have had buddies that have had the polar opposite, Interesting. you know, I, Oh my God. Like, and and maybe more. So, you know, I know the system that they're working to improve the system, which is, you know, archaic, but when you, when you, when you, uh, you think about, you know, a soldier that, that is injured, let's that with emotional and physical injuries, brain injuries, you know, coming out of combat, having to have been sort of thrown into a, a VA system that's impossible to navigate mm-hmm. in that condition, mm-hmm. you know, there's, a, you got a problem. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's essential for us to support these outside organizations that make it really easy. Like I said, to, to mm-hmm. go into the programs 
the three that I support, which I'd love to, to plug. Absolutely. Uh, one is uh, the Gary Sinise Foundation. Yes. So Gary yeah. is a good yeah, buddy yeah. of mine. And yeah, that's awesome. He's a huge supporter. Yeah, yeah. I, f- I follow that one. That's a good one. Yeah, it's great. And so he, uh, you know, they're doing, I mean, you know, they're doing the USO work and that they're, you know, re- entertaining the troops yeah. with the Lieutenant Dan Band. Yeah. And he does all that. I've been a recipient of that when I was in the Navy. When I first joined the yeah. Navy, I saw him live up in Great Lakes, up at boot camp. So absolutely. Um, it, yeah, it's it, pretty funny. It, it, yeah, it was great. Um, but they're also, you know, they also build homes for veterans and they outfit homes yeah. for veterans with dis- disabilities, which is huge. I have a buddy that started a program that we support uh, called Warrior's Heart. Uh, it's based in Bandera, Texas. It's a 500 acre luxury rehabilitation center. It's beautiful. And, and wow. so, so to enter that program, you have to have uh, either a chemical or an alcohol dependency. Uh, but once you're in, they address PTS and TBIs. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not only assisting veterans but they're also working with uh law enforcement officers first responders so that's a really kind of wonderful and unique program uh and then lastly uh higher ground usa is based out of sun valley idaho it's a wonderful wonderful thing that they're doing with veterans they're using recreational therapy okay. yeah to uh to get them out get them inspired and healed and and uh they also have branches in new york city and los okay. angeles which are working with homeless vet, the homeless veteran community. So if you're looking for foundations to support, those are uh, exceptional. And I can tell you firsthand that, that I get uh, to this day, 20, 15, 20 direct messages a day from veterans talking about, you know, either the film and, and, and how it's made them think or how it's yeah. inspired them to, to go out and help other, you know, fellow veterans or people that have gone through these programs, mm-hmm. you know, and, and uh, a lot of messages from guys that have gone through the warrior's heart program and, and, you know, they're heartbreaking, man. I mean, it's just, yeah. it, it's incredible. It's, you know, this program gave my daughter her father back this, this, you know, wow. so there's a lot of really good stuff going on with these organizations. So support them if you're looking. Yeah. I, I wrote those down and for anybody listening, you'll be able to check those out in the show notes as well, uh, as well as all of Max's stuff. So absolutely. Um, I do like how you say, and I've heard it before, but people are saying PTS, you know, without yeah. the disorder. So I, I do appreciate that i'm not sure if everybody picked up on that but i think talking about it is being more accepted i think it's a long road till we get there till it's abundantly accepted but i I do i spend being a podcaster i spend a lot of time on social media promoting the podcast and interacting with people just as we are right now but on a personal level and i am telling you right now i know i'm seeing more of the interaction i'm seeing more of the posts that are saying it's accepting and, it, and they're getting passed around. So even on that, and, and I say social media is a tool and I believe that people are starting to use it more as a positive thing and they're being able to pass those things around. And I think that's great because that's yeah. what was going to reach the most people. And of course there's these incredible organizations out here that are doing it as well. And once again, it just all boils down to us having the conversation and i love that we're able to have that and i always say like if you're just listening to this podcast thank you for for listening first of all but it doesn't just do you any good just to listen to it like go out you have to go out there and you need to have the conversation yourself if you need the help or if you know somebody else needs to help you need to go out there and have it because you know i I, like i always say in my other uh podcast where it's just me like you can listen to all the best advice listen to all the best podcast read all the best books, but it doesn't ultimately mean anything unless you act on it. So I would highly encourage you to go out there, go in the show notes, check out these foundations and, and have the conversation just like we are right now. And, uh, I did want to ask, uh, before we get out of here, our time's almost up, but, uh, I did want to know something, especially being in all of the roles that we talked about, the military geared roles. Is there like something over this, like, uh, probably, I mean, you almost it's over two decades now and is there something maybe that you have and we probably talked about a lot here so let me get this question out before i answer it for you but is there like a shift in mentality or is there like a perspective on life that has maybe been changed 
because of being in these roles and making friends with these type of people, like your view on the world around you? I think we kind of answered I mean, a little we, bit you of know, it. We, we, we kind of covered yeah, it a, a so. little bit, but you know, it's, it was really just kind of realizing, uh, the power that I was going to inherit in this industry to affect people and do something good, you know, yeah. and, 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 and kind of seizing that opportunity because it really uh, gave me purpose. You know, yes. this can be, this can be a really uh, a very selfish self-centered kind of uh, profession if you let it be and and you know and and i think that you know here's the thing it's like you lead by example you yeah. know it's there there's um people you know when when there's a natural disaster you know hollywood gets up and they have fundraisers and telethons and this and that and they raise money and they do this for you know children across the globe and this but, but you know where's the support for the military and so i'm trying to you know in my mind let's do that mm -hmm. Let's rally. Let's like, you know, and so, you know, look, I mean, it's one person trying to create a little bit of change, mm -hmm. but it starts with one person. And so Absolutely. I'm trying to rally as much support as I can. And, you know, in my circle, in my, uh, my profession, my community. You, Max, you are, you absolutely are. And I, I love it. And that's why, I mean, I was, I told you via, via email again, I was just so excited to speak with you and talk further into this because I, I and I've said it before and I'll say it again on this very episode, but I'm just so passionate about having that conversation, but about helping other people. It's like, it, it can be so like, we all have issues. I get it. We all have problems in life and we all go through a lot of shit and it's easy to get wrapped up in it. But I promise you, I promise you speaking from personal experience, if you, even while you're experiencing all this stuff, if you go out there and have the conversation and try to help other people while you're dealing with your own stuff, Yep. you are going to be better off for it. So from, from me to you, for what it's worth, I'm, I'm more than appreciative of everything you're doing and the impact you have with the voice you have. It's, it's really inspirational and it encourages me to continue to have these conversations with the next person and the next person and the next person. So thank you, thank you. so much. Before we get out of here, what's the best way to find you and the movies and any websites like that? Yeah, so you can follow me. Uh, I'm very active on Instagram. It's Max Martini LA. Uh, Twitter is Max Martini LA. It's the same. Uh, Sergeant Will Gardner, which, like I said, you know, has, has uh, allocated 30% of its profits to those three charities that we talked about. Uh, that's available on Amazon, iTunes, Vudu, most of the streaming platforms. Uh, please order it. Please watch it. It's, it's, it's a great movie. I'm really proud of it. There's a amazing cast of supporters in the film and uh and and we made it with veterans behind the yeah. camera to do Too cool. so there's we're just trying to you know we're trying to get we're trying to help us realize our cause and our, and our efforts and that would be uh, a huge success i love that max again thank you so much for your time it's, it's truly an honor thank you so much for being here and have a great rest of your night thanks brother thanks for having me see ya <laughs>